Alrighty, what's going on ladies and gentlemen? It's your man of fire himself, Half Pint, once again. Hopefully you guys' this week is going pretty good. Pretty good. We finally got moved into a new place and figured it's time to start making more videos. Over the course of the week, or the past couple of days, I conducted a Q&A over on my uh, YouTube community tab and over in Discord to see what kind of questions you guys had for me. First question comes from DTwilight73 asking, Silva win, my guy? You know, funny enough, I actually worked on a, uh, a bit of a, like, a little timeline, like a rough roadmap, which I'm going to be having coming out in a future video. Um, but from the way things are currently looking, it's probably going to be a couple more months before we even see Silva. Uh, I know it was more like a joke kind of question, but realistically, though, well, we could see her sometime this year. It might be some time, though. It's probably going to be some time. Next question, Don Coca-Cola. Half pint, how many Pandora scenes do you think we'll see at the end of the game? A thousand with a hundred for each waifu? That's what I imagine. I don't think it would be that many. That's that's a pretty ambitious number for a, uh, a studio as small as a foe is. I mean, that that's, that's a lot going on there, especially since they're developing uh, a game in tandem with the Pandora scenes. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. They wouldn't have that many scenes. You know, I think it's more about quality over quantity. And going to the future, we know that there's going to be some more interactive scenes in the future, you know, more things to do. Uh, again, I have a, another video coming out specifically about Pandora. And the big thing about that specifically is, you know, interaction is what we're really uh, lacking when it comes to Pandora. So, in all honesty, I'm kind of hoping we're not going to get as many as a thousand or like a hundred for a waifu because that just seems like that's... That's too much for the devs, and that's probably just not going to be that enjoyable, having to pump out that many different scenes, right? So I think it's more about the quality over the quantity there. Next question comes from Ed Soul asking, Will they add a good and bad ending to individual relationships like getting cut, left, KIA, or etc.? I don't think they want to do that. Uh, if I had to take just a random guess, because I don't have that sort of information, but if I had to take like a random guess, I don't think they'll have like bad endings for relationships, you know? I think they're going for more like the Mass Effect route where it's um, you continue the course of the story and pursue the relationships, right? And you try to get to that pinnacle moment for the relationships. Whereas Mass Effect, you choose one person. In this game, you can seemingly choose all of them and build them up. I don't know. Maybe uh, each playthrough, you can only get to the max for one per waifu. Or maybe they want to give you the ability to max out each one. It really depends on how they want to make that sort of stuff. Next question comes from Truly asking, when are they adding Devotion Quest actually voice acted movie cutscenes with waifus? The rumor is when they reach version 1.0, coming out of early access, but I was hoping they'd do it sooner. Funny enough, we actually have an answer for this question specifically, and it came in the form of a Q&A back in November. Um, Tibber specifically was talking about the contextual sex scenes, and he said, One thing we want to mention is that the waifu Devotion Quests that are in development are designed from the ground up to feature exactly this kind of content. They will feature a unique sex scene that is entirely contextual and entirely fantastic. The scripting and voice acting of this module has been already completed. We will start including this feature in the game around version 0.5 and 0.6 releases. We feel this will be a really interesting addition. So there you go. You have more of a deadline on that one specifically. It looks as if we'll be seeing that sort of stuff come to the game in the 0.5 and 0.6 release. I believe the Terran release that should be coming out either this month or next month should be the point. 3 uh, version of the game, so not too far off, and um, seeing how development usually goes for games, it they might not just do version 0 .3, 0 .4, 0 .5, you know, there might be some skipping around, the next update could be 0 .5 for all we know, as in like, you know, the, the one after Terran, that update could be 0 .5 if they start skipping around, who knows, uh, it's all about internal dev builds at the end of the day, but yeah, we do have kind of an idea of when we'll be seeing those sort of quests in the future. Now, we don't know if it's going to be all the quests, or maybe they'll just be implementing, like, the first couple of waifus, and maybe the other devotion quests will be unlocked in the future. Um, who really knows with that one, but we at least have a rough estimate of when that's coming out. Question from, I'm going to butcher this name, uh, Varigan. Varigan603. <laughs> right, that's as close as I can get with that one. What do you think they have planned for Celestina? You know, honestly, I don't know. Um, I made a video going over all the characters that looked like were still, you know, shadowed out in the little character selection screen. And, I mean, it looks like Celestina's not really going to be fitting into that one. Uh, I feel like she's going to be kind of innocent when the game starts, as we've seen her already. And she's going to become a bit more rigid as the game progresses. You know, as if, like, the more we take down the Imperium, the more aggressive she gets and the more um, 
or I guess the less innocent she gets. I don't know, maybe she gets defiled at the end. Who knows, because there always seems to be those sort of ultimate goals when it comes to Studio Foe. John GG asks, will we ever get Demi nipples? I will not rest until I know for sure. I, I think this is like an ongoing... Uh, like inside joke in the discord server i don't know if it's just from this guy maybe i'm just like reading into this too much or maybe i've seen this a couple of times from other people i don't know <laughs> it's uh that's a great question my guy we'll have to keep asking studio foe when we're going to be seeing those because that is that's is very that's a good question it's very um these are the type of facts that we definitely need to see coming from a high quality game like this you know where's my high quality in detail nips for the <laughs> For the waifus, come on now. <laughs> Alexis A asks the evolution of Mantix and if they will also change their scenes on Pandora. Now, if I had to take a guess, um, I'm assuming that they'll probably just add more scenes when they evolve. I don't think it'll change the past scenes with the Mantix. Um, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm assuming that once the Mantix evolve, it'll just add another possible scene with that evolved Mantic. Or maybe they'll just only use the scenes with the basic mantics just because the evolutions are probably just for the sake of combat. Uh, who knows? I, I actually haven't thought about that one too much. That's a great question, though. Imbertator Sabuno, Sabueno, I think that sounds a little bit closer, <laughs> says, Sova, when? You know, that's what I'm asking, my guy. I have a lot of people asking about Sova, um, Studio Foe. <clears throat> I mean, all they really gotta do is just throw out more hands. I think we're, we're good to go here. Eric Weggle, I think? ask I, that's so weirdly phrased when will we in germany ever be able to officially buy this game after months streamster is not working and no usk is in sight you know i thought this was actually fixed after gog released but i guess that doesn't seem to be the case maybe i haven't really looked into this too much um there were some q a's that happened at the end of last year there was a whole weenie chinese situation again very sorry i wasn't there to cover that i have a lot to make up for but it looks like behind the scenes, they're still working pretty hard to make this sort of stuff work. Um, it's easier said than done when it comes to releasing a whole new platform. Uh, the fact that they have to release, you know, Streamster just for the sake of being able to play this game on in other countries. Um, I th again, I thought GOG was one of the places that was going to help with other countries because a lot of restrictions were on Steam. I could be wrong, but either way, I think they're still working. Uh, behind the scenes on Streamster. That's really all I've got on that information. I, I don't know. I don't have that kind of information with me, uh, sadly. Up next, we have a few questions from the Discord servers. The first one coming from uh, Studio Foes. Fusion X asks, Did you watch the Fo Chan VTuber debut Half Pint? So, for those of you who don't know, um, over on Twitch, Fo Chan had a like an hour long stream that she did, and she was basically answering questions and taking questions from people. Um, unfortunately, though, I was at work when this was happening, and I was only in there for, like, 30 seconds just to say hi. Uh, I thought that they were going to be archiving the video at a later date, and they actually didn't. Uh, if you go over the Twitch channel, which I'll have linked down below, they have, like, 30-second tidbits from the stream itself, but they didn't actually upload the stream in its entirety, so... If they plan on doing it in the future, I don't know. I'm not really sure why I got taken down in the first place, which is kind of weird, but, um... Yeah, I, uh... Until they decide to archive it and upload it somewhere else, I, I don't know anything about that stream, sadly. But it sounded like it was a good time. DO96 asks, why is Fortune's booty a 7 out of 10 at least? And then someone replied to him saying, a 10. It's a fucking 10, obviously. <laughs> I think he might have been in the stream, um, but there was a stream I did a couple months ago over on Bacardo specifically, and we were going through all of the, uh, the different characters from Subverse, and we were raiding the booties, and we figured out that, um... You know, they did a pretty good job on the boob job, but I'm, I'm, you know, there's a lot of disappointment when it comes to server's booties. I'm very let down, very let down. And Fortune had one of the best, but sadly, it was still only a 7 out of 10, you know? I'm like, I'm, I'm really thinking that, uh, they really need to step up their game. You know, as the official person with the butt pillow sponsor, 10% off at checkout when using code HALFBITE and ButtressPillow.com. Uh, yeah, as the official sponsor is the Buttress Pillow, I am uh, a little let down what they have going on in the, uh, the booty department. Dimfool then asked the question, what question would you ask Fochan if you made it to the stream? Uh, Fochan half pint collaboration win. He then asked another question along the lines of, when will we get a tour of the new house at some point? And uh, we'll see. There's enough demand for that. 
Uh, as of right now, I don't really have any plans for a tour. You guys let me know down below what you're thinking, if you guys want to see a tour or not. Rubenizer asked the question, Q&A, what are your thoughts on the Huntress's butt? And he said, for your consideration, and gave me a picture of Mr. Kristoff saying, I've said it once and I'll say it again, the Huntress has the dark horse booty of the Subverse cast. And then gave me a uh, few lovely pictures to dissect. Here's the thing I gotta say about that. She's cheating a little bit, alright? She's got the latex going on there, you know, you got some of the good angles, but like when you're looking at it, and if you have the full 3D model take a look, it's actually, it's not as, uh, it's not as round as it first appears. It's kind of on the flat end. I'm a little disappointed. You know, I expect a little bit more. Uh, Dark Horse, when, when I get that kind of vibe, I think more along the lines of, uh, it's more of the outlier. It's more different, but I wouldn't call it, like, the best of the best. I am a little let down, honestly. I think Fortune still has a bit of an advantage on that. You know, she's got, although a little bit more latex as well, it's got a bit more shape. And then there's Blythe. <laughs> Next question comes from Hitman. He has a lot, so I'll try to summarize them. Uh, the first three questions basically boil down to what's your opinion on the D.Va system, and do you think it'll transfer to grid combat? I, I think the D.Va system's really good, and the way they kind of, like, kept this a secret the entire time, and so I, I made the video talking about, um, hey, they should add ultimates to the game as, like, a form of meta progression, you know? Um, or just to add some spice to the combat, and then literally... Like, a week or so after that video, they released a dev diary talking about, Oh, hey, by the way, there's a secret system we've been working on this entire time, which is literally ultimate, but it's for the, uh, the grid combat. Uh, and I think it's great, you know? It really adds a bit more diversity when it comes to the gameplay, and I think that's going to be really good for the sake of player choice. Alright, so for those of you who don't know about the D.Va system specifically, it's, A, one of the closest kept secrets for, uh, the game so far, which is fantastic they've been keeping those. I think it was kind of alluded to with the quest with Alicia, with the whole collar thing. Like, at first it seemed like it was kind of a funny joke that she was, like, getting more power from the kinkiness while she had the collar on. But I think it was secretly alluding to the, the D.Va powers as well. I think the D.Va system, because they didn't give very much information on it, and they said they'll do it in a later post, it seems to be along the lines of just a transformation that gives more abilities when you access it. Now, I don't know if this is going to be exclusive to um, only certain battles that allow for it, or maybe you have to build it up. Right? Because the waifus already have their own ultimates inside of grid combat. And this seems to be more of a game changer, you know? Um, I don't know if it's like, it's a consumable sort of thing. I don't know if you have to build it up over the course of multiple um, combat fights. And then you want to choose if you want to use it or not. Or maybe if a battle goes on long enough, you have access to this ability. We don't know, but it it's, it's nice that they had a trick up their sleeve to really change up the combat and adding more player choice inside of the game, which is absolutely awesome. That's another mechanic, something to look forward to, which is great. Uh, Hitman was also asking if this sort of thing could transfer into space combat. I don't know if the D.Va system specifically will transfer into space combat, but we do need some sort of, again, meta progression for space combat. Again, I've talked about this a lot. You can go check out my uh, last video going over the Alicia update. I went a bit more in depth with this, but yeah, definitely need some form of meta progression, whether it's an ultimate, it could be something the enemies are building up, maybe something you're building up, it could be an ultimate, it could be an enemy ultimate, it could be just a massive health bar, I, I, I don't know. But just some form of, like, the player feels like they're progressing through combat instead of we're just mindlessly shooting ships, right? So we'll see, we'll see. I don't think D.Va specifically will be transferring over space combat, though. They'll probably have something else for that in mind. Hitman also asked, with one of your previous videos, you mentioned that some of the events per planet were funny, but a lot of them were lackluster as well were rewards of credits, tech, and bio. How would you spice them up? In my personal opinion, I would love to see some screenshots of the crew on these planets, stations, asteroids. Some could be funny, safe work pictures, and some not safe for work with better rewards, which lead into my next question. And he talks about the gallery mode, which we'll get to that one in a second. And I agree. Um, as of right now, it seems lackluster because you get like five credits, which in the game, I think, means like a penny, if that. Right now, the currency in game between credits, tech, and bio really don't mean anything. And I think it's because we're playing in early access. Um, it's very on rails. There's not much choice of which one to upgrade first because a lot of the later upgrades right now are um, still locked until the game comes out later on. So it's not like I can just sit on a bunch of tech and then just go through one tree when it comes to upgrading the Phoenix. You know, maybe you can do that when the official game comes out, but as of right now, you're very limited. And so the currency has, like, no relevance right now. It's just a part of 
play in the current build of the game. And that might be one of the reasons why it seems so lackluster. But when it comes to the events themselves, it also just doesn't give that much. So the currencies already don't seem relevant. And on top of that, you're not giving much of it. Now, you give a good suggestion when you're saying something as simple as, like, a screenshot. You know, I think that would be kind of funny. Maybe someone was just messing around with the models and just took a screenshot. It's like, instead of talking about how Dalek and the captain going on the beach and having a beer, you know, maybe instead of mentioning that and then giving five credits, you know, it's like, oh, oh, we, we tell you this story, but you're not going to see it. Here, have five credits for your trouble. You know, have a screenshot. Have them both sitting on a chair and uh, clanking their beers together. Boom, screenshot right there. I think that would be kind of funny. And then maybe it's a screenshot you can hang up inside the captain's quarters. That'd be kind of cool. That's something you can at least do to build it up. You know, at least seems like you're now you're being involved with the adventure and you're not adding too much work. It's not like we're asking, you know, let's go in depth and actually see this fucking area, but let's have some sort of tangibility when it comes to these events that happen. Because as it is right now, I would honestly just prefer taking them out. There's just no point even having them in the first place unless we're going to add something more to it. So it's like either upgrade them or just don't have them here because they add absolutely nothing and they seem more time wasting than anything. His next question was asking along the lines of the gallery mode is fun and all but a bit lackluster at times. Uh, what would I do to spice it up? Me personally, I've never been a guy for um, gallery modes and quite frankly for a gallery mode, this is probably the most in-depth I've seen for a lot of games. You know, you have the model, um, you have a lot of poses already. Like, for an early form of a ga gallery mode, it's pretty good. It's it's, it's pretty good. I, I don't really have much complaints about it. It's just not a me thing. Um, maybe if you had more implementation with it into the game itself, maybe that's why. Because it feels a bit disjointed or disconnected from the rest of the game. Um, maybe when you do something in Pandora, then you unlock that pose in the gallery mode, right? You know, tie some of those together. Uh, maybe you unlock more of those poses throughout the course of the game. Maybe those events. You go down, land on a planet, and an event happens, and you learn a new pose. Maybe it gets you something for the gallery mode. Gets you a new background for the gallery mode. You took a picture of the awesome vista. Or maybe, um, I guess when the waifus learn a new pose or something. I don't know, but I tie the events and the gallery mode together. There you go. See, now you just fix two problems at the same time. I think that's a good way of doing it. But if I'm being honest, the gallery mode, it's not bad. You know, compare it to other game gallery modes, it's one of the best. It's pretty good. And you can already take screenshots and put that in the captain's quarters. So, I mean, I, I think it's pretty cool. Hands down. Hands down. They, they did a good job with the gallery mode. Um, we'll just wait to see how they implement it with the rest of the game. I think that's the big problem with the gallery mode is just the implementation because it seems like it's just hacked on. His next question was, what upgrades would I like to see for each girl in ground combat? Um, and there's a couple of things here specifically. Um, again, we've talked about more forms of meta progression, and I think that would be more of a team-based thing, not just adding another ult. But we have the D.Va system coming in, so we can see what that might be like in the future. I think the big thing, and it kind of ties into this picture here that was a pre-alpha version of the game. And here you can kind of see the armor, the weapon, the upgrade trees, and that sort of stuff. And I'm hoping that... This wasn't scrapped, and this is just something that they can't really implement in the current version of the game, because what we have right now is just a linear upgrade system for the waifus. The, the more you play them, the more they rank up, and the more they just upgrade by themselves in the background. And I don't think people want to really see that background stuff. Even if you're the one that's clicking manually the upgrade button, you know, you feel like you're doing the progression. Now, I would try to go for something more like this, where it actually seems like there's some player choice when it comes to the upgrades. And this is kind of what I'm hoping for. Um, when it comes to combat itself, um, I wouldn't mind going a little bit more in depth, actually talking about ways to implement and improve ground combat. For the time being, I have made a video in the past. You can check this one out. It might be a little outdated now, but I wouldn't mind doing another one in the future. But for the time being, I wouldn't mind actually upgrading the, uh, the waifus, you know, before going into combat. So you feel like you're going in with your upgrades. I've also considered the ideas of, like, bringing in consumables, you know? Something that might change up the uh, the pace of combat. Maybe you can earn consumables from the market. Uh, you get them from events. Uh, you get them from just playing more. Uh, maybe you finish a battle and you get a consumable, and maybe it's used for giving yourself a handicap, but more rewards. Or maybe it makes the next battle a little bit easier. Maybe you just want to hold on to that for a harder battle. I don't know, but I think that would be a good way to really spice up the combat. His last question was... 
about ship upgrades specifically for space combat. Uh, should you be able to evolve the girl's abilities like Killy has more range, uh, ELF, fire, double projectiles, etc.? Yeah, um, I think there should be ways to really spice up their combat, and I thought they were originally planning that before the game came out. One of their dev diaries said this. I could entirely be wrong, so I don't read into that too much. But yeah, I, I wouldn't mind actually getting some of those upgrades, whether it's just something simple like um, giving Killy more range, right? That's not a bad idea. Or maybe it's um, a modifier you put on where she gets even less range but does even more damage, right? So maybe you, you swap modifiers or you could actually end up upgrading the, uh, the waifus. Because either way, as it is right now, it seems like they're building towards upgrading the waifus, but they just haven't implemented the system yet. And Killy, it's becoming like painfully obvious because she was really good in the beginning, but as you progress in the game, she's already becoming weaker, as if she's supposed to have upgrades, but she's not receiving them yet. So who knows? Um, I think there are upgrades coming for space combat in the future. I just don't think we've heard about them or seen about them. I, fingers crossed. Next question comes from Jaysalt asking, will you disavow any further delays of SOVA? Absolutely. All right, that's all I got for you guys today. Uh, this video kind of ran on a bit longer than intended, so I should probably cut this short. And some of the other questions were more stuff directly for the studio themselves asking, when is this coming out? When is this happening? Um, and for those, I don't know. Uh, again, I want to make this perfectly clear. I don't work for the studio. I don't know this sort of stuff. I'm just a content creator that makes videos in his free time, and that's it. So um, hopefully we'll see more stuff and uh, more information pretty soon. They've been pretty good with info as of late. I just have not been doing pretty good on covering it. But again, they've been having a lot of Q&As, a lot of dev diaries. They killed it in November and December, so I'll have to go back and cover that sort of stuff hopefully before the January dev diary comes out which with my luck is probably going to come out probably this week or next week when I'm in the middle of working on the video so thank you all for watching long time but a hard time and I'll see you guys next time